everyone. So I decided that I wanted to do a new series where I answer some of the questions that people have related to dementia care or just dementia in general or people living with dementia. And so every week I will answer three questions. If you ever have any questions that you want to submit, you can always email me at hello at letsbamboo.com. If you are finding me on any of my social medias, you can uh, leave us a message on Facebook Messenger or Instagram DMs, or I think YouTube still has messages, but I'm not sure. But anyways, you can just send me a message and I will try to answer your question in the next series, okay? So I have my clipboard here because I wrote down the three questions that I'll be talking about today. This is gonna be really casual, low key, okay? So the first question is, do people with dementia lie? Now, of course, when we're talking about people living with dementia, we're still talking about people. So yes, people with dementia can lie. However, most of the time, they're not lying. Usually if they're saying something, it's because they honestly believe it to be true. So sometimes they may do what we call confabulate, where they're kind of making things up to fill in the gaps of their story. But sometimes we do that too, you know? Like if we don't completely remember how events unfolded, we'll kind of fill in the details of what we assume probably happened. But that's what we would call confabulation. Now, in other cases, they may have something that we call anisognosia, and in this, they have decreased insight into their deficits, and it's due to damage of the brain. The brain has changed, and so they're honestly not aware of their deficits. So they may still feel like they can do things, even though they can't, because they're not aware, they're not capable of processing that. Does that make sense? So. All in all, when people with dementia are telling you something that you know is not true, it's not necessarily because they're purposely lying to you, okay? The second question is, should you tell your loved one when they are in their right mind about the things that they do at night that are so crazy, or should you not tell them what they do? And so this question might be referring to sundowning behaviors because another person asked, should you show them a video? Now, my answer to this 99.9% .9 of the time is no. I would ask myself, what is the purpose of me telling them this or showing them this? Because a lot of the times they're not going to remember what they did or what they said, how they acted or behaved. And so you telling them this they're probably gonna deny it anyways. Or if you show them a video, they'll either deny that it's them, especially depending on where they are in their timeline, they might not recognize that as them. Or what you may run into is that it scares them. Like, just imagine how scary that would be to see yourself in this video and have no recollection of it. It's almost like you have no control of your body. That's scary. And why would we want to scare our loved one like that, you know? So, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, I wouldn't break it up, honestly, because it really serves no purpose. Honestly, if it's a disturbing or dangerous type of behavior, your energy will be much better targeted at trying to figure out what is causing the behavior, what is the unmet need, than trying to prove to them that they're behaving a certain way. Does that make sense? And then the third question is, what makes a loved one accuse someone of taking from them that are not taking from them? So this is what we would call a delusion, which is when we believe something to be true that's not actually true. And so what's happening here is you have to remember with dementia, there is a loss of short-term memory, okay? So for example, we'll just use my clipboard here because it's in my hand, it's on my mind. So if I place this clipboard somewhere and I don't remember placing it somewhere, in my mind, I always put it back in a certain place, but for some reason, someday I put it somewhere else. 
and it goes missing and I don't remember doing anything with it, I'm going to ask somebody in my household, you know, have you seen my clipboard? Did you move it? And if they say no, and I honestly, honestly believe that I put it back, I might say, well, you must have moved it because I know I put it here, right? So that's where a lot of this happens, especially when it comes to stealing, because if a person is putting something somewhere and not remembering where they put it, and they think, well, I know I put it here, I always put it here, and it's not there, well then, since I didn't do it, you have to do it. Okay, so that could be one scenario. Another scenario could be that oftentimes your loved one is living with you, and sometimes you may move their stuff. And so even though you're not taking or stealing, you're just putting it up or moving it somewhere else, in their mind, you've stolen it because where is it, right? So sometimes this happens just in normal cases where we're just honestly putting stuff up, but it could also happen in cases where you don't want them to have access to it. And so you do intentionally take it. You're not stealing it per se, but you're purposely taking it and moving it. And so that could also be why they're accusing you of stealing. And then a third reason why this accusation of stealing could happen is based on the dynamics of the relationship. So, for example, this can go back years and years and years. But if, say, your sister and your mom kind of had like a, mm, like they just didn't always get along and they were always kind of at each other's neck about this and that. Then if something goes wrong, if something goes missing, well, you know, she must have took it because she's, she's always messing with something. And, you know, so it could stem from those like dynamics of the relationship that they have with different people, including yourself. So that's where we see some of these delusions develop. So if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer in the next series, which, like I said, I'm going to try to do every week. Send me an email. If you feel comfortable, you can even leave a comment under this video. Message me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, if they still have messages. Like I said, I don't know. But I hope this video was helpful and quickly answered your question. I just want this type of Q&A series to be, like I said, relaxed, low-key, just answering the questions because I will be doing videos in the future going more in-depth. Okay, so I just want this to be like real light and quick. Okay, so if you have any other questions, please let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.